How you guys doing? <laughs> Happy homebrew Wednesday for this week. Um, seemingly impossible to get these things out on time. Um, the first part of the week for me is usually kind of weird, so I and I run behind, and then I think, oh yeah, I gotta do my homebrew Wednesday. Anyway, here we are. Got myself a beautiful beer here, um, and uh, we're going to um, talk about something I got down behind me here. But first. Um, this is another one of my concoctions. Now, we'll talk a little bit, a little bit more about it later. But this is a Cooper's English Bitter, and in it is biscuit malt that I added and some Cara sixty Crystal sixty malt that I also put in, and a little bit of hops. The hops I put in. Excuse me for. Uh, I think it was a five or ten minute little boil there. These, <clears throat> of course, as usual, I, I don't bring my glasses around with me when I'm doing these videos so I can't read anything. Experimental pine fruit. That's what it says. Is some, somebody sent me these. Um, interesting. Very interesting. And I didn't know what to do with them. They're, you know, doesn't say what to do. And... So that's what I did. I threw them in to a 10 minute boil with uh, the grains that I mentioned and I added the can of Coopers and some dry malt extract, a little bit of dextrose and I'm really really enjoying this beer. Now the thing is it's it's kind of cloudy. That's because you know when you put grains I, I had to kind of be careful because when I ground them up with my grain mill here if you do it too fine then you get the dust you know, like the flour kind of thing. And then it, you know, that gets into your beer and it takes a while to clear out. So you kind of have to find a happy medium between too fine and not fine enough where you're getting whole, 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 um, or unbroken husks in your grains. You don't want that because then you don't get uh, all the flavors. So, but I'm really enjoying this. It's, it's very, uh, kind of an English ale, I would say, uh, style. A little bit sweet, caramelly, caramelly, and biscuity, just like what the biscuit malt was supposed to do. And it's got just the right amount of bitterness from the Cooper's kit and the hops on the top. Uh, nice layer there, just to balance everything out. So it's a great beer. Um, as for the exact recipe, I really don't know. I got back here one night and I was just like, all right, I gotta, I gotta brew some beer. Boom, got some grains out. And I was, you know, you saw how I did it. You know, I was sniffing them and tasting them. I'm like, all right, I'll put this much of that, that much of this. Every once in a while, I'll, you know, I'll go online and I'll look at, oh, how, how much of this particular grain are you supposed to use? Um, like what percentage of the grain bill, you know, is this supposed to be? Because if you put too much of some of them in, they can take over. So now, of course, doing a partial extract the way I did it, I didn't have a grain bill. But normally, you, if you're doing all grain, you've got maybe about 10 to 12 pounds of grains, you know. And so, you know, 5% of that, you know, you can do the math. And that's, that's what you go by. So usually with Crystal 16, you know, you about 250 grams. Um, of, of it, 300 maybe, in a batch. So about 5% or a little, a little bit over 5%. All right, so that's that. Good beer. I've been making some really great beer down here lately. I don't know what's going on. We'll talk more about that later, okay? So I wanted to show you something. Most of us have these, but you don't have what's on top and what's over it, okay? This is a carboy, and the thing that's on it is a cover, exactly fits perfectly on the carboy, right? There's a zipper here, so you can put it on and take it off, you can see what's going on in there, and I got sent two of these from carboy.net, and I'm just checking this out tonight. 
and I was really impressed with the quality. Um, here's the packaging. Okay, so you go to carboy.net and check them out. The reason why I like this, you know, and I sat down and I read all the, you know, went to their website and read some stuff on there, checked it out, checked all the, the seams and everything and the handles and whatnot, because I'll show you, you know, what this is all, what it's got. And I'm pretty damn impressed with the quality of it. Um, why would you want one of these? Well, I can think of the primary reason for me is um, lifting, lifting the carboy up, okay? So it's got two handles. They're extremely fastened on there. You're not going to get those ripped off of there, okay? And it's got one on the bottom, too, so you can, you know, jostle sanitizer around. Or if you wanted to, you could dump stuff out of it. I filled this up with uh, about five gallons of water and I was able to safely and easily lift it um, with two handles and um, move it around. Um, the bottom has a rubberized thing on it so it's not going to slide around. Um, the other main reason that I really think thought that these would be handy for me and you guys too I've had questions about fluorescent lights, you know, and how, you know, you're supposed to keep your beer out of ultraviolet light. And uh, I haven't really had too much problem down here. My lights are not as, uh, they're, they're a certain color temperature. I don't know if, the, if there's a lot of ultraviolet light coming off, but I don't know if you've ever noticed, but behind me here, there's a, a window up there and I've got it covered in tin foil. And that's because the sun comes in through there and it shines on stuff throughout the day and you do not want sunshine shining on your fermenters and I've come down here and the sun's been like over there like it's shining through and it's shining right on my wine right, right on my carboy I'm like no you, know, you don't you know that's what you don't want so these things are pitch black can't see a thing in there okay and uh, they, they're, they're made of um, a material, a non-absorbent, uh, sort of a canvas material uh, that is rugged, won't rip. There's a little pocket here. You want to put, you know, a little note, something, you know, a little information about your, about your brew. And I just find them, I just find them pretty cool. The other thing that um, I know from experience is that these carboys are brittle. If you get two of them side by side, you could put them, you're storing them in a closet or something like that. If they bang up against each other, you're done, okay? They're gonna crack, and I've had it happen, so I know, okay? They're not very sturdy things. With these, you don't have to worry about it. I, I like this, I think this is really cool. Um, I have two glass carboys. Um, I often don't use them at the same time, but I see no reason to take this off ever. It's the type of material it is. You can wipe it down easily um, if it gets, you know, spilt on. And just don't take it off. Just leave it on. You can cart this thing around. There's no worries about it breaking, spilling, dropping. And if something bangs up against it, less likely it's going to crack. So all around for the price, go to their website, Carboy. Dot net and they're easy to take off and put on if you did want to take it off and you know clean your your carboy although it wouldn't get dirty you know if, if you had this on it all the time but if you did want to take it off just so you can see all all around in there make sure you've got all your your you know yeast and cake and stuff out of there and they're easy to take on and off so I thought that was pretty cool and I want to thank carboy.net for supplying me with these because I know I can use it and yell ouch yes that hurt I hurt my elbow there you heard it <laughs> lucky I had the carboy cover on I could have cracked it but no, I'm just joking so there they are they come in all sizes for all different kegs so all you gotta do is measure your keg you put your order in and they got they got you covered all right great people um, and you know small company let's give them a you know give them a plug that's that's what we do okay we help each other out all right so cheers to you guys. Thanks a lot.
Good product. I approve. I like it. All right. So now I want to go away from this brewing area for the rest of this video and go and sit over beside my little office area there in there and we'll have a little chat. Okay. We'll be right back. Cheers, guys. Nice to uh, sit down, have a nice cold beer. And I'm going to tell you that this beer, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed. You know, oh, let me get my breath here. Hang on a sec. Uh, apparently, there was something on the news. I didn't see it, but a friend of mine was telling me on the local news here, CHCH News, about home brewing and how it's becoming so popular and everybody should do it and it's easy and if you can make craft dinner you can make your own beer and you know with the way the prices are and beer just went up again in price here <laughs> what do they want from us pretty soon you're only going to be able to afford to drink beer if you're you know a millionaire unless you make your own um yeah you know where we live in parts of canada it's ex it's expensive beer is just outrageous and it's not even as expensive here as it is in other parts of Canada, um, like you know other other um, countries, other provinces, um, and uh, that's why there's this big craze um, around home brewing. So it's catching on, and I'm proud to be part of that. That's for sure. I'm thinking back to, by the way, the, the end of this video is a small section on a vinyl update. Okay, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned. That's why the video is a little a bit longer this week, because I am I put that on the end, okay? And if you don't want to watch that part, then don't. <laughs> you know? Um, I was thinking back to uh, years ago, when um, I, we, my wife and I, we didn't have any kids. We used to live in an apartment. <clears throat> we had a... <clears throat> we had a three-bedroom apartment, and... Um, we had an air conditioner in the living room and an air conditioner in the bedroom and the other two rooms uh, were basically not being used. We we're expecting a child so one of the rooms was being you know going to be used as a bedroom and the other room was for me to do you know my stuff, all my stuff I do. Brewing, video editing and whatever else I was up to at the time and um, I used to keep the door shut in that room because I didn't want the air conditioners to have to work harder to keep the apartment cool. And in the summer, I mean, we had a lot of hot summers back then. Um, it would get up to 90 degrees in that room, you know. So I'm, and I'm brewing in there and I didn't have a clue. We're talking 92, 1993, you know, 94. We didn't have the internet. Uh, the only book that I saw about home brewing was one of this flea market or something. I saw one and I... I bought it and it was like I brought it home and I, I thought, what the heck is all the, you know, this grains and hops and things. I didn't understand it all. I was opening cans, man. That's all I ever did. Why? The beer prices. Okay? That's the only choice you had. If you couldn't afford to buy beer, you made your own. Can opener. Brewer's best friend when you're in a pinch, right? So... <laughs> I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> but, you know, um, it was true back then for me. And I used to use a sodium metabisulfite for sanitizer. Because um, I couldn't get I couldn't get Star Sand. We didn't have, I don't even think, I don't think we had too many brew, place, brew stores around here. Um, just the one I, I've always gone to, which is Complete Home Brewing. And um, so I was using a sodium metabisulfite, but that stuff, after a couple of uses, it starts to smell really bad, you know. It gets, it's like ammonia, it, you know, it just, <laughs> you know, it gets, it gets in there and it makes you, it's just terrible. So I said to hell with it. I'm not using it. So what I used to do was, uh, I didn't pay for my electricity, I didn't pay for my water, and I didn't pay for my hot water heater, okay. We had a great back then with the apartment. You didn't pay for anything, just the rent. That was it. And um, so what I used to do, I knew how the system worked. Okay. You turn on the hot water and it's pretty hot. You know, you can have a shower, you know. 
But if you leave it left it running for 10 minutes, it would trigger the hot water heating system for that floor in the building to come on. And of course that would run for half an hour and get everything all nice and hot. So then you turn the water off after 10 minutes, you turn it off and you wait and you wait. And about a half an hour later, you'd come back and you turn on the water and it was as hot as hell. I mean, it was almost boiling. And you could use that to sanitize your equipment. Well, I did. I wouldn't do that now. But it's the only alternative I had other than the stinky sodium meta bisulfite stuff. Sulfate, sulfite, whatever the hell it's called. Correct me down below if... Tell me which one. <laughs> I'm sure it's sulfite. Um, and I was brewing my beers, you know... You know, all I knew was that the, the hotter it was in the room, the faster the damn thing got ready. So I would be brewing at like 90 degrees Fahrenheit in there, and the thing would be bubbling away. And three days later, I had finished brew. You know, of course, I'd bottle it, and the bottles were stored in the same room at the same temperature. And then I would refrigerate them, and I would wonder why the hell it tasted so bad. I mean, it was just like, you know, okay, maybe it's because I'm not sanitizing properly. So I went back to the sodium metabisulfite, got myself a surgical mask, you know, and I had some of the worst tasting beer back then. I really did. And who knew it was because of the temperature I was brewing it at? I mean, this stuff just tasted like, it tasted like piss. I mean, it was bad. A uh, couple batches I poured out, you know, and I thought, what the hell's going on? What am I doing wrong? There was no internet. There was no forums or anything you could go and ask, you know, what was, you know. And um, I'm just, the reason I thought of that, and of course, once I realized it was temperature-based, then I, okay, all right. And then I started making better beer. Um, and so <clears throat> the reason I thought of that is because if, if I was making beer like this, and I know this is cloudy and it needs to sit for a little while because it had grains in it and, you know, they were finely ground and it needs time and I didn't do the, the uh, gelatin thing because I didn't have time. I wanted to start drinking it. I didn't have any pipeline going. Um, if I was making beer like this back then, I would have been absolutely amazed because compared to what I was doing back in the early 90s and you know now it's night and day I mean if you just if you properly sanitize watch your temperatures and this was even brewed a little higher than I would have wanted to this was brewed at 75 Fahrenheit so eh, mm, eh, Cooper's yeast eh, handles it you know and I'm loving this really loving this beer um, and it's just not hard to take a, a simple ingredient, you know, beer kit, pre-hopped, and spruce it up. And, you know, more and more people are doing that. I don't like the labels. I'm an all-grain brewer. I'm an extract brewer. I'm a kit, kit brewer. I'm a this brewer. I'm a that brewer. You're a brewer. Your technique and your, your methods that you use are the ones that work for you. The ones that you think are the best for you. If you're not living in an area where beer is expensive, then the only reason you would really bother to make beer is just to make better beer than what you can buy. And, you know, the hobby aspect of it, which is fun, of course, we all know that. Um... I mean, people can call themselves whatever they want, but I don't like to categorize it, really. I'm an all-grain brewer, but I don't always brew all-grain, you know? I'm a brewer. I'll brew extract, I'll brew mash, mini mash, I'll brew partial extract, I'll brew all-grain, I'll brew bloody apple juice if that's what's going to happen that week. So, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of the way I look at that. Just a little bit of thinking out loud here, really. Um, 
But I'm really enjoying this. This is a good beer. It's probably one of the better ones I've made in the past six months. So, um, you know, cheers to that. Anyway, I'm probably running out of time. And before I go, I just want to mention that if you want to buy one of my shirts, it's tgtshirts.com. If you want to go to a great forum online and talk with me and talk with all of our great community home brewers that we've got, it's 17brewcrew.com. And you can ask me a question, question directly, or you can put your question out into the masses and have the brains. Those are the brains of the outfit. Where are they? Okay, yeah. I've got these, and I'm going to show them. These are brand new. Brand new. Beautiful stuff. And they sound absolutely incredible. And you get an MP3. Actually, no, it's not even an MP3. A um, AAC which is better than MP3, version of it that's a vinyl rip. So they give you a, 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 a digital version of it, but it's taken from the vinyl. So there you have it. And that's what Rush does, you see. That's why I love those guys, because they know what they're doing. So I was very excited to get these, and they do sound so good. They sound better, in my opinion, than the original presses, because they really did do some real modern technology when they made these. Well guys, thanks a lot for watching. Cheers. I'm almost out of beer. I gotta get myself another one. And speaking of Rush, I'm currently watching a documentary uh, called Classic Albums, The Making of 2112 and Moving Pictures. So if you haven't seen it, I think you can find it on YouTube. It's not a very good quality one uh, or you know wherever you get your your videos from. But if you're like Rush, have a look because beautiful video. Just, I love these guys. They're just, they're awesome. As, as just as people, not just as musicians and, and, and artists. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's what I'm gonna get back to. So thanks a lot for watching. Have a good day, have a good week, have a good weekend, and we'll see you real soon. Be safe, cheers out.